So William, do you like my apron? What's the significance? Ah, well, William, at Garden Time, we have all the good dirt. <laughs> we do, and we guarantee it's pure gold. Welcome to Garden Time. You know, it's not too late to be thinking about soil and about planting perennials or bulbs. You know, all your independent garden centers have lots of plants for sale this fall. In fact, coming up on the show today, we're going to be showing you some late season perennials. Also coming up, we'll be visiting a tiny house builder. But coming up first, the tips of the month. Well, you know, as the weather starts to change, there are still stuff to do in the garden, and we're here with Jan again for the tips of the month. So I see you have some grape leaves that I look do. a little bumpy there. What's they going are. on with that? Yeah, uh, this is uh, called an arinium mite that gets on grapes, and they feed on the underside of the leaf, and the leaf tries to protect itself, and it, it makes all these hairs uh, that actually protect the mite itself. And you wouldn't be able to see it without magnification. Oh, it's, it's, so it's a tiny one then. It's very tiny. And then this is what it looks like if it's been there a while. Wow. It starts to, uh, the hairs start to turn brown. So then a lot of things that have those kind of hairs on them, you can't spray really, can you? No, because they protect themselves okay. for anything like that. Um, normally, there's nothing you're going to do to treat it. It's not going to affect the grape itself, mm -hmm. um, if you have grapes. Yeah. And um, uh, so... No, with normal um, horticultural oils or spraying in the winter months or other things are going to pretty much keep this in check. So if you do spray like fruit trees and stuff, if you just do that, that'll probably check it, it right It'll back help Because it, it doesn't down. really kill the plant It doesn't or really do that, but people get pretty concerned when they see right, that happen. Yeah. Well, the, and there's a lots, lot of different mites. They're, they're called blister mites, arinium mites, aerified mites. There's lots of different kinds. And so that, that's good. And I love talking to you about stuff like this because you always give us that info that, that's not very really popularly known yet, but is new and we're seeing it currently. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's just there. So what else should we do? Well, I'm going to bring, this is the time of year, the end of September. I'm going to bring in the house plants in the first part of October. So what I do is I clean off. We can turn this around. I'll snap it off. Yeah, right. <laughs> We could clean off the uh, debris that's on the top from the summer uh -huh. and get rid of it. Make sure it's watered well. There's some osmocote in there. And then put on some fresh potting soil. So, and, and if you've had any insects or any problems with it over the, over the summer, you might want to remove the top one inch of soil so that um, any insect eggs that are in there won't come in, come in the house with you. And you know, and I, I, I never really did that well, but there have been times, and I've started doing it because of you, I got some slugs from, uh, yeah. because of slug eggs were in yeah, there. Yeah, they are. And that's nothing so gross as having those in your house. And then all <laughs> I'm gonna do is just prune back anything that's dead here. Sure. This, is, this hangs in the kitchen, but I brought it out to the greenhouse for the majority of the summer. So I'll just clean it out, it's been, it hasn't been outside, it's been in the greenhouse. So I'll do the same thing and clean it up and put some new potting soil on it. So Jan, there's also an example here of a tomato that I'm gonna show you <laughs> because I know that if in the ground, people would think this just wasn't watered, but you pulled it up and what happened here? Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> this, this root never developed very well. And it did have tomatoes. I picked the last one, here's one now. Um, but I, we have mice and we have um, uh, moles and what happened is they they come around and sometimes they eat the feeder roots and or this just ends up with air underneath okay and everything else in this bed is fine yeah it's beautiful and so that's what I think happened here but luckily it was able to produce its tomatoes first <laughs> and then um, plants that are stressed now from a really hot summer are gonna stay stressed if they're if you don't keep them watered um, into the winter right. so if they're stressed now and they are not taking up enough water if they go into the winter sometimes that will uh, rot the uh, or the feeder roots will be gone and then the winter comes we get a lot of rain and then we get root rot and then sometimes the plant actually dies of stress 
in the winter from the summer. Oh, wow. Okay. So you just look at your plants and see hydrangeas are the biggest telltale one. Yeah. That if they're uh, looking pretty stressed, then you need to get a little bit of water on them so that they go into the rainy season in so, good shape. Let's see, what else do we have here? <laughs> um, stop pruning heavily. If, if you've got something that's in your way or you need to do that, fine, take it away. But if you s do any heavy pruning this time of year, you're going to encourage new growth. Yeah. And then as that new growth goes into the to the winter months, it doesn't harden off yet and you may lose all that new growth. So it'd be better to wait uh, to do pruning after things bloom, rhododendrons, azaleas, etc. after they bloom in the spring. And roses we could still and prune. Roses. We, well, we, you could take the tops off and, and not so that the canes don't whip around in the winter wind right, and then right. do your major pruning in February. And anything else that we're doing this uh, this time of year? I, If I could read the list that I made right here, <laughs> I, uh, I would tell you. Um, training and pruning berries. Um, I have got a young man that's been coming to help me a little more now that I can't do all this, this right. acre myself. It, it happens. Yeah, <laughs> and so we've taken out all of the canes from last year and now we've just trained them up and now things are a lot better. Well, so I've got blackberries, raspberries. Thanks to you, I have a triple crown um, berry. And so um, they're in much better shape going into the winter than they would be. Well, there you have it. You know, just because summer might be coming to an end doesn't mean gardening is. So uh, thank you so much, Jan. We'll come back next month and we'll do this all again. Okay. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the parkway. parkway. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. To bring the extraordinary colors of fall to your landscape, you need to come to a place that offers more than the ordinary. At Sagawa Nursery, we love fall. From brilliant yellows to vibrant reds, we have one of the Northwest's largest selections of Japanese maples. At Sagawa Nursery, we also have a colorful selection of hardy plants, so your home can be as beautiful as the season. Come visit us and see how we can help you make your season extraordinary. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Well, this is a beautiful day and I am out here at Blooming Junction. I'm with Ron and we're going to talk, Ron, about late blooming perennial type things that are happening in the garden right now. So let's jump right in. Okay. Uh, first, we have some of the, the tall sedums here. Uh, we have thundercloud. Um, this is going to have a beautiful red kind of fuchsia colored uh, flower um, probably in just another week or so. Uh, this is Elsie's Gold. It's going to be covered in pink. It's got the beautiful variegated leaf. Adds a little sparkle to your garden. Um, very reliable plants. And easy. Such easy Very easy. Um, I have these in my yard. They just come up, do their thing, and go away for the winter. Uh, wonderful plant. And what is this beauty? This is a Soldago. 
uh, goldenrod. Uh, this is just budding up too, and this is going to have beautiful uh, gold flowers on it, golden yellow flowers. Um, kind of brings you into that fall feel. Right, right. And um, it's one of the shorter ones, right? This it one? is. And this will this will start blooming here in another week or two also. And I think a lot of times, at least I know I am guilty of this, I forget about grasses in the fall, which is their glory, a lot of them, and you pick some beauties here. That's right. Um, this is my absolute favorite. We probably talk about it every time you're around. Um, <laughs> this is Boodaloo Blonde Ambi Ambition. I love this. Um, just a fantastic uh, grass, adds a lot of movement to your garden. Um, and then this one here is Burgundy Bunnies. Um, this particular grass likes it a little on the moist side. So if you have an area that's a little moist, that'll work out good for you. And what are these? I like these colors here. Oh, this is a Coreopsis. This is called Lightning Bug. Um, this is a newer one. This is a beautiful little flower. Again, and, kind of transitioning into the and fall. And they've really done a lot of work on these. They've, they've gotten a whole host of colors and variations that are nice. That's right. Uh, Joe Pieweed's looking really good right now. This is a taller plant, so it's good for the back of the border. Right, right. And then, of course, yellow. Is, that's got to be fall. <laughs> that's right. Um, and this is the Heliopsis. Um, um, going back, this is a Hellenium here. Um, ah. This is a great plant, um, and it comes in so many different colors. Um, most of them are kind of fall colors, again. Uh, the yellows, the oranges, and reds. Um, some get quite tall, uh, four to five feet. Um, some, some will say shorter. Um, but this is a Heliopsis, and in addition to you know the beautiful uh, flower, the leaf um, I, I pattern love is the leaves. incredible, yeah. incredible. So you know, just because we're talking about fall and fall colors and all of that stuff, there's still a lot of beautiful plants that are pinks and blues at this time of year blooming. What's That's this right, one? Like the Russian sage here. Um, this comes in quite a few different varieties, so you can have them nice and tall or more short and compact. And speaking of pink, this and Minarda is lovely. Compact yeah, is, right. Uh, the M Minarda pink lace. Uh, the Minardas are looking really good right now, too. And I've, I've always loved these. <laughs> the Eucomus, the pineapple li lily. Um, that one is uh, sparkling burgundy, and I tell you, those look good when you plant them in mass. Right. Threes and fives. Um, beautiful plant. Beautiful plant. And you know, it wasn't that long ago when there was just a couple of varieties of echinaceas, but they've so expanded in colors and styles. Yeah, it seems like every year there's uh, a few more being introduced. Um, this one here is Magnus. This pinkish um, one, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and this is a very reliable one here. This one here um, is now cheesier, it's called. Lovely. And this is uh, Salsa Sombrero Red. And they're really getting, I mean, they've had some struggles with the reddish tints at times, but they're really finally getting some that yeah, hang on. Yeah, and that really well. holds us red well. And then, you know, if you talk about the glory of late blooming plants, come on. Yeah. Tell me about this beauty. Yeah, this is, this is a um, deciduous hibiscus. So it dies back completely to the ground. You don't have to worry about frost or anything like that. Really, it's been blooming for oh, the last couple of weeks and will bloom, you know, uh, well into uh, early fall. And just because it's a hibiscus, a lot of them are tropical, but this one really does survive it here does. quite well. We had it in our drought garden and yeah. it, it, it's done well. No water through the summer. Um, and even, you know, um, if there's not a bloom at the time, there's usually a bud being produced. Right. The right. foliage is fantastic. The, on this one, it certainly yeah. is. It's absolutely stunning. Well, this is just a, a brief example of all of the color that you can still have late in the season and into early fall. And if you want to find out more, come out, talk to Ron and his staff, pick up something for your own garden. Thank you so much. Ron. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at portlandnursery.com.
fiber on. Deck it right the first time. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Fall in the Northwest is the best time of year to plant with warmer soils and cooler evenings. A time to spend with family and friends. Fall is a time to celebrate. To decorate. And to enjoy the colors that are only found here in our area. Fall is a time to come to Garland Nursery. And let us show you all that fall can be. Garland Nursery, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. I'm at Portland Nursery on Stark Street, and I'm in their beautiful courtyard. You really have to pay attention to this lovely area. We have a fountain. There's really lovely settings. Your, your company does a beautiful job here. Thank you. Really pretty. Thanks. So today, we're going to talk about Sarah's favorites. I think that that's kind of fun, because for this time of season, it's nice to give your opinion and what you like to plant and what you like to see. Yeah, we were pulling together some stuff, and it was like, well, these are the things I like. So this is kind of what we've got. Excellent. Um, I'm pretty obsessed right now with the color that we have on these um, Katinas um, and the Physocarpus, that really dark color. Um, and so if we start with those, one of the sure. most common questions we get about uh, the Katinas is how do I keep it from, it's also called smoke bush, so right. how do I keep it from getting that smoky flower and just kind of getting out of control? And They do get big, for sure. I'm not going to say ugly, but it, you know, it doesn't look kept. By right, any right. you need to manage it a little bit. Much more attractive when it's right. more compact. So the way to do that is to really just hack it back in the spring. Okay. Um, and it'll kind of keep its shape a little bit better and not the flowers won't get so crazy. Um, you can also cut back the uh, physocarpus pretty hard as well. Yeah, that is nice because sometimes we love the big shapes, but they get too wild. So, mm -hmm. um, and I bet you could do it in the fall too. So maybe you have two times to do it in case you forget to do it in the fall. Yeah. Excellent. And um, I, I picked this Hakanakloa here. Um, Pretty. Because I think it's a really low maintenance plant that adds a lot of co um, contrasting color and texture to the garden. Um, you know, these all have some different shade and sun requirements, so you'd have to pick what's right for you. But I think the combination of the chartreuse green with the darker color is really amazing. You throw some red flowers in there seasonally, it would just pop. That is nice. Um, and so actually we have a camellia over here, which we have a bunch of in right now. Um, those are a great evergreen a shrub, and they've got the winter blooms, which is really hard to find. Um, so you know, a red camellia in this kind of combination could be really nice as well. That is nice. And really, I love that you have two different kinds of forms. You have this one that's, um, you could even train on a fence, uh -huh. and then you have a shrub form. So that's really nice. People can really use it in a lot of different applications. Yeah, it definitely is, um, a, 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 I don't know, a plant that can serve a lot of purposes. Definitely, definitely. And then what are these ones on the end here? So these are Hebes. These are some of my favorites. And it seems like a lot of customers really um, adore their Hebes. They're not the most winter hardy. So people, you know, come in sad sometimes in the spring when they've lost theirs. But there's so many different varieties. You can really tell a Hebe by the symmetrical leaves um, that neat. it has. And, um, you know, they just, there's so many different forms too. I There's mean, a bunch, this yeah. one doesn't even look like a hebe. It looks like a, a heather. Mm -hmm. It's really neat. And so you can even put these in containers, don't you think? You can, yeah, they would be great for that. And they're really nice for a small evergreen shrub that's going to, or something that's gonna stay small in the right. garden. Um, they're, they're gonna be a little more compact and whatnot. So um, those are, I would say, one of our biggest customer favorite shrubs as well. Yeah. So Sarah, I think we're missing maybe one thing here. You're talking about some pops of color. So what do you mm -hmm. think about that? Yeah, I think it's a really personal choice because um, you could pop so many different colors in. Um, I would recommend, you know, going with a fall or spring, some, you know, annual that you could change out. Then it kind of brightens up the garden in different ways, um, you know, long-lasting color. Um, 
coming into a garden center, like we have our front walkway set up with oh, lots perfect. of things that, you, that are blooming seasonally. So, you know, if you're walking through the courtyard and something catches your eye, it's going to catch your eye in the garden as well. So I think, um, yeah, some pops of annual color would be perfect with these kind of combinations. So you got the easy maintenance here and there you go. Throw it in there. A complete picture. Yeah. Well, we love having Sarah tell us all about her favorites. And you have to come out to the Stark Street Portland Nursery or the Division and see what they have for fall for your garden. And that's going to be your favorites. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Our customers are looking for the most modern appliances generally and we always seem to find that with standard. If we go to a big box store, they may have one or two of the manufacturers, but they don't have the full spectrum. Any product we could think of needing for our home, we know we can find it here. If we have a specific request from a customer, we know that we can go beyond our specifications and find exactly what they're looking for. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. Have you ever wished you could say, I built that. At the Northwest College of Construction, you'll learn how to build a home from start to finish. Fully accredited, our school offers the only residential carpentry training program of its kind in the Northwest and is supported by the Home Builders Foundation. Keep your day job and learn how to build on the weekends as you acquire lifelong skills and launch your career as a builder. But hurry, class starts September 23rd and is limited to 12 students. Find out more and register online at nwcoc.com. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong winds, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. So I am standing in front of a tiny home, and I am here with uh, James Ash, right? And you own Daystar Tiny Homes, which yep. is building this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of questions. We have been with uh, Don Sprague out at Garden Gallery yeah. Ironworks, and we've yeah. done some stories on the interior more so than the exterior. But we want to know, first of all, what what is a tiny home? Is there what are the limitations and expansions that you can do and call it a tiny home? Well, a tiny home is generally under 400 square feet, 400 square foot or less. Um, it's just a home on a smaller scale. It's not an RV. It's, um, it's uh, just a home on a smaller scale, downsized, real small scale. Right, right. And, and some people can, you know, they want to downsize that small and they can live tiny. Well, and with saying that, then tell me who is it do you think, and you would know doing this for five, five years now, right? Um, who buys these? Who is interested in buying a tiny home? I actually, starting out, it was it was building mother-in-law right. <laughs> cottages, cottages with people putting their yeah. backyards or for college students. But now there's there's basically about I'm seeing about three different types of clientele: um, couples with kids that want to downsize, that maybe got burnt when the economy right. fell and got over limit over budgeted on a house, but um, and they want to downsize, they want to pay cash and uh, until they can save enough money to build bigger. Sure. Um, I've also got uh, single people that, that just want to downsize and live simply. Right, right. You know, not with a lot of stuff. Uh, you, you've got a, a, a group of people out there that are just tired of the 70 hours a week to buy all the toys and the, pay for the big house and then don't get to enjoy it. Yeah. So they want to live on less, smaller, and so they can use their money to travel and... Sure, and, and that makes sense. In fact, uh, now Sherry, who we have interviewed, who is actually buying this one from mm -hmm. you, uh, she also wanted to downsize her home and, and get someplace, but 
tell me about some of the things you've done here because like I know she wanted a space for her granddaughters yes. and you've worked all that in in your creation of it. Right, She uh, generally the uh, tiny home customers will have a sleeping loft, a queen size loft and they'll sleep in the loft and it makes more room on the ground floor. Yeah. She wanted to have a bedroom on the floor so uh, we made this bigger, longer. So she has the bedroom right there at the back and uh, then she does have a loft but it's for her grandkids. So. So yes. I would think that just like uh, building a, a huge house, you actually work with the people that are buying them and oh, you yes. really work into what it is that they want to have this home become for I, them. I build everyone custom, I don't build models. Right. I just build it, I let them, the, my floor plans and designs are just a place to start. Right. And then they can tweak it and redesign it however it fits them. So and then, then you, you really are a part of this process, you, you don't, you know, sub this out, you are the one that no. puts it together, you come up with the idea, you work with the place, person, and then where, are there a lot of restrictions on where they can go, where they can There are these? some, there are some in Oregon. Um, Portland's very tiny house friendly, and most of the counties are tiny are the same house way. friendly. Nice. Yeah. nice. And so, and, and the state is working out new regulations and. But that's in the future. Well, that'll <laughs> take effect at the beginning of next year. Yeah, nice. Well, there you know, this has really been a fun, a fun story for us to go through. And this is another, actually, this will be the last uh, segment that we make before you get to see this finished product in about a month. So stay tuned to uh, Garden Time so you can see this whole episode completed and see the beauty of a tiny home. Thank you so much, my friend. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And you know, fall is a great time to plant. So go to your independent garden centers and grab a bag of soil. And who knows, you might end up with a new wardrobe. <laughs> so for any other questions you have on today's show or shows in the past, you can always go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Stop and smell a rose, hear a child laugh, see the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in historic Silverton. 400 year old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden, the Oregon Garden has something for everyone. You can ensure the garden remains a jewel in the mid Willamette Valley through your support as an individual, family, or corporate member. Support the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.